Okay guys, before I even start, we'll be using power tools and a router is one of the most sketchy pieces of equipment you'll ever use in your life. Because if you get it wrong, it will take fingers off. Real easy, real quick. So just keep that in mind. If you've never used one before, get somebody who knows how to use one to help you. Otherwise, the injuries that you can sustain from these little suckers are life changing. Trust me. I've had plenty of friends that have removed fingers, thumbs, hands, all with routers obviously bigger ones than this but they all do the same thing and can all cause serious injuries so just keep that in mind wear your protective gear safety glasses dust mask hearing protection because the high pitch noise off these suckers will send you deaf in no time so now i've been using routers for you know 30 odd years still have all 10 fingers so make sure you keep safe when you're using any sorts of power tools if you remove a finger not my fault you're being warned okie dokie let's get on with it hi guys darren from venom fluid art thank you so much for joining me today so today i thought i'd do something a little different for you and show you how to make your own pour boards. So, what we're going to do is first start off with a sheet of MDF. Now, this one here is, I don't know, half inch thick. It is 1200 mil long by about 600 mil wide. And I'll be able to get about 18 pour boards out of that one piece of MDF. First thing you need, earmuffs. It gets loud, okay? Here in protection. Safety glasses are a must. And you can get away with just a basic dust mask. All right, we also need a compass, ruler, pencil, and a tape measure. And one of these little dudes. So that one there is a trim router that I've made my own circle jig up. So I can make various different size circles just by moving this pin. Further away from the cutter, the bigger your circle is going to be. Now you can buy circle jigs to fit your router at home. So you can pick them up from Amazon. Most hardware stores usually have them. But I chose to make my own because it's absolutely huge. So what we'll do is I'll clear this table off and we'll get started. Okay, so what I usually do first is I make up a template like this. That way I can fit as many on the sheet as I possibly can to maximize how much I'm going to use of the MDF. Now that's going to vary on what size you want your rounds. When these are totally finished, they are size is that 185 millimeters across which is about seven and a quarter inches so at seven and a quarter inch I can get 18 out of a sheet so what we're going to do is get our ruler and our compass and we're going to go with the 185 mil because it's easier for me to add up in my head so half of 185 is what we need. Now I've already set this, so I know it's right. 
which is mm, which will give us 185 okay so what we will do is with our magic compass what we're going to do is get as close to the edge as you can that way you can fit more on So what I'll do is I'll pick two edges, like that one and that one, with the needle part of the compass, I'll make a little mark, like that, which makes it easier for me in a moment. So what I'm going to do is draw my circle, like that. So that there is going to be the diameter of our pour board. Now in the centre where the pencil is, we'll put a little cross mark. That's where the needle of the compass was pressing in and you can actually feel it with your fingers. We're going to drill that out. So what we'll do first is decide on how big we want our inside diameter to be. Now on something like this, it only needs to be, you know, 40 mil, which is like almost inch and three quarter, something like that. So what you can do is either grab your ruler or your tape measure, come into the 40 mil mark grab your compass again wind that in now it doesn't matter what size you make the inside as long as it's got enough width on the outside edge to hold up the pour board stiff so the bigger diameter you're going to go, the more surface area you're going to need on your inside ring. But we'll go with this one. So what I'm going to do is draw another circle. We'll make this a different size. So we'll go with that big, which is about 45 millimeters from one edge to the other. Then, what we're going to do is grab our drill Now The hole you're going to drill needs to be the diameter of that pin for your jig So I know that one six and a half mil so what I do is grab a six and a half mil drill bit, find our little X, which is right there. Draw through it, like so. Now we've got a hole for the circle jig to go in. So we get our router. Like this, back that off. So we can adjust the depth. Now, for us to get this right, we're gonna need that cutter to be on the inside edge of our circle which means we need to adjust this little guy so undo the nut move that in you'll be able to see the cutter I'll cut away to another shot if I can 
So you can see the inside edge of that. Like so. And we'll nip that up. And this one here, we want to tighten it up so it doesn't move. Now that should be pretty much flush with the surface for your first go. That way you can check and make sure you've got it right. Now, the whole time I'm playing with that, it's unplugged. You can't get your fingers chopped that way. All right, so what I'll do is I'll plug the router in, put the mask on, glasses, earmuffs, and we will start to cut this one as a template for all the other ones that we're going to do. All right, so what we'll do is turn this on. That looks about right where I want it. So now what we're going to do is back that off. Give it a little bit of depth. I usually just go a couple of millimeters at a time. It's only a small cutter, it's only a small machine. All right, so we'll flick that on. All right, so now you'll be able to see where the cutter has gone into the board, like that. So if any of you guys have actually done your own car audio and stuff like that, it's exactly the same way you make speaker rings. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut that right out and we're going to use this piece as a template. So what we're going to do is adjust the depth so the cutter goes deeper every time and then just keep going until it's almost cut right through. Okay, so I went a little bit too deep on that last cut. I usually leave a millimetre or so, so it doesn't cut right through. And then what I'll do is flip the sheet over and 
do the last pass from the other side. Doesn't matter, we've already gone through. So that's what we've got now. We've got our own little template for marking out the rest of the sheep. So let's do that. Okay, so all we're gonna do is grab our round that we've got. Put it so we've got a, a gap where the cutter's gonna go for the next one. Draw a circle. You can either mark the center like that or grab your drill bit and partially drill the hole. That way you've got your next hole ready for the next router. We do the same here. By doing it that way, you know you've got the center of your circle every single time. It's going to, they're all going to be identical. All right, push that off to the edge of the table so I can go right through. Same with that one. All right, so what you're going to do is go and mark out your entire sheet all exactly the same way. So what we'll do is, to speed things up, we'll do that. Okay, now that we've got the whole sheet all marked out with our outside diameter and the holes drilled in every single one, what we're gonna do is go back to our router Change the depth from the last previous setting back to zero again. Find the center hole. Okay. Add a little bit of depth to that, a couple of millimeters at a time. Nip up the lock. Okay, we'll plug that back in. And we're gonna route the entire whole lot of them, maybe three quarters of the way through. Okay, so just make sure what depth you're running at so your cutter doesn't go right through the board. You don't wanna go all the way right through yet because we're gonna do the inside circles. Okay, so once you've done your first pass at your first depth, what you're going to do is keep edging it down bit by bit and do every single one until they're three quarters of the way cut through the board. So we'll go through all these and make sure they're all three quarters of the way because what we'll end up doing is flipping the board over and then cut the last bit through the other direction. Okay, so we'll go through and do all of those now okay now that they're all three quarters of the way cut through what we're going to do is grab our little template we started with 
grab our router, make sure it's unplugged. Don't want any accidents. All right, so what we're going to do is put that in the center hole. Wherever it is, there it is. And what we're going to do is, once again, loosen that lock nut. So we can do our inside cut. Remember, we want it on the inside of the circle that we drew previously. All right, so I'll spin the cut around so I can see where it is. That looks pretty good. Doesn't really matter for what we're doing. Lock that in and give this a little bit of depth. Lock it in. So it just nips up like that. Okay. Put that to one side now. Now what we can do is do our inside cut first pass. Now for your inside cut, we're going to do the exact same thing as we've just done with the outside. We're going to cut three quarters of the way through it, a little bit by little bit because it's only a little router. And we will go from there. So I'll plug this one in and show you. So, that's in our little hole. Just leave it in the wood until it stops. That way you can't hit your fingers. Look that out. And you'll be able to see our first pass so we're going to go three quarters of the way through on all of the others so just do it little increments like you did the outside ones same on the inside three quarters of the way all right so now that the whole sheet's done what I usually do is grab the router and adjust the pin so it's the outside size again, and it fits in the hole, like that. So that's the outside cut we're gonna go for again. Make sure that's locked. Leave your depth about halfway. Then what we'll do is flip the whole sheet over. And you should see a whole heap of drilled holes where it's gone right through. Now what we do is, set there, plug her in, and do our finish cut. It out. We now have our round like that. So what we'll do is go round, chop all the other ones out of the board, and then we'll do the inside ones exactly the same as the outside. Okay, so this is what we've got. What we're going to do is to make it safer because there's nothing to hold that center to the outside when we cut through so what we can do is grab 
some double sided tape now that's the stuff that is just tape there's no foam in the middle of it so what we're going to do is grab that tape add it to the center like this bit of grass in there all right then you pick the top off it like this if you've got a little knife it's easier to do or a blade all right so what we'll do is peel that off like that grab our ring make sure there's no dust on it I'm going to place that directly over the top of the other one face down press that down like that so that's stuck together now so with your router and you've already adjusted this to suit the outside hole all we're going to do is put that in the center like that make sure I've got enough room to spin this and still be on camera all right so that's in the hole turn it on Let that stop. Lift it up. And our ring on the outside can pull off. Then just use a pallet knife or something like that to get underneath this one. Because as you can see, that is really, really tight. Alright, so. That's just an old pallet knife. Slide it in underneath. Just to break that tape. Tape just peels off. And you are good to go to put more tape on for your next one. That's the safest way to do that so the center doesn't move on you. If you want to, you can add a little bit to the sides so the whole lot's attached. It's even safer again. So what we'll do is go through and do the same thing with all of those.
Okay, so now you should have a whole stack of rings like that. So what we are going to do is grab some sandpaper. Now this is just 40 grit sandpaper. Gonna give the inside a bit of a sand with it. Like that. All the way around. Then what I'm going to do is tip it on a bit of an angle and just take the sharp edge off. All the way around. Flick it over. Do the same on this side. Take any sharp edge off. That. Same with the outside. I'll go around the outside edge. And then we'll get back to where we started from. Same again, 45 degree angle, knock the sharp edge off. Flick it over. Like that. Sanded rings. So that's what you actually use for car audio, fitting speakers in. How cool is that? All right, so what we're gonna do is um, sand all of these, and then we'll do part two of the, the episode where I'll show you how to do the top section of it and glue it all down and get that all ready for a pull board. For our next step, I've got some 3mm marine ply. Alright, and what we're going to do is grab our sanded rings. We're going to put them on our sheet. I'll just move that into frame so you can see it. Like that. Draw a circle. So we can use one ring as a template, leave a gap in between, and just go right down your sheet. Alright, with this little offcut that I've got here, I can get four out of it. Like that. So what we'll do now is, we'll grab a jigsaw. So this one here is battery powered. Makes life easy, you don't have the cord. And what I'm gonna do is cut out roughly around those circles with the jigsaw.
all right so what I've done is trim that out and I've cut it over size okay that's so we can clean it up later with a trim router so what we do next put that to one side we'll grab our ring gonna get some PVA wood glue lay some of that down then what I do is I smooth it out over the whole surface So the whole surface is covered with it. Doesn't matter if it goes down on the inside because that'll actually seal the MDF anyway. So if you want to, you can actually dab your finger and actually glue on the inside edge of your MDF. And as that dries, it will seal the MDF for you. It makes it waterproof. Alright, so put that on the inside edge. Then what we're going to do is grab our cutout, line it up with the outside edge. What I usually do is rotate. So make sure it's pressed down firmly. And then I'll either wood clamp it with wood clamps or just stick something heavy on it and it'll have enough weight there for when it dries it'll be dry <laughs> so yeah when you put some weight on that just let it sit overnight it'll dry I usually do half a dozen at a time and then stick an old can of paint on that's got a fair bit of weight in it if you've got an empty tin fill it with water and sit it on the top of it so put that somewhere flat and then just stack them up one after another on top of each other put some weight on it and then leave that overnight to fully dry and cure okay so there I've made up four of them I'll stick that in the workshop now and I'll put some heavy weight on it and leave that overnight until it fully cures and then what we'll do is um, do the next part where we use our little trim router and trim that down to size okay so these have now dried overnight nice and cool so what we want to do is trim that with a flush trim bit so what I've got is another little battery powered router like this so a flush trim bit let's see if it'll focus is just a straight flute bit like that with a roller bearing on it okay so that little roller bearing rotates up against the edge of our board so what we'll be doing is just to show you how it sits okay let's have a look let's see if it'll pick that up okay so the little roller bearing sits up against the wood and all you're doing is following that as it goes around so what we'll do is put the battery in turn this one on
Okay, so once I've done that, I'll get a little bit of sandpaper. Just sand the edge. Okay. Then sand all the way around the edge of here. What that does is it closes the grain on the MDF so that um, paint won't sink into it and make it swell. So all you do is give it a light sand. All the way around. And there you go. You've got your own, very own made cradled rounds, pour boards. So, if you buy a full sheet of MDF, which by metric size is 2400 by 1200. Imperial is what? Um, eight by four. At this size here, you can get 72 out of a sheet. So when you do the maths on how much a sheet's gonna cost you, a sheet of the ply, You know, you can knock 72 out in a day, no problem at all. Definitely is a pretty cheap alternative. So, or if you don't have the tools, there's plenty of companies out there that actually do sell these things. So, but if you're like me and just like tinkering and making your own, why not give it a go? But, just remember, these things here, aren't toys they can remove fingers quicker than you can say hey where's all this claret coming from so whenever they're not in use pull a battery or unplug it safety first all right guys hopefully you like that if you did please hit like share and subscribe ring that notification bell that way you get to see all my videos as i release them um, if you want to see how I make other bits and pieces, just leave a comment in the comment section and, you know, if I get enough people that have interest in it, I'll do a few videos on how I make the stars, um, the solid rounds, dolphins, things like that. So, alright guys, hope you like that, have fun, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.